Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, today is the last day of July 2023 and we are picking up uh, kind of where we left off with our bug tracker. We left off on this lab 0504. So last week we finished uh, 03 and we're moving on to 04. And if you kind of look here, um, what we what we start by working with is more on the front end, you know, designing and theming, uh, just a general look and feel of our uh, of our application. I added a lecture that I did on SAS um, to the playlist, so kind of start there if you haven't watched that lecture. Um, watch the lecture on SAS. It's a short one. It's about 30 minutes, and it goes over a lot of the theory that we're going to be implementing here. So that's why we started this morning with, with going over that theory and then more or less practicing and working on um, working on the look and feel of our application. But I will be running through these concepts uh, today. And so um, here is my front end issue tracker React. And as I do in there, uh, install SAS. The NPM package for SAS and <clears throat> uh, install Bootswatch, and that allows us to use different themes on Bootswatch. And so you can kind of start with one of these themes um, and, and again completely customize it. Anything you know about CSS, anything you know about HTML, it can all be applied here. Um, and so this is just a starting point for a look and feel for our front end. So um, I'm going to pick something that looks a little different just so that you could tell uh, off the bat that this is um, a theme is working and I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and do quartz and so this will be my theme that I bring in <clears throat> and this allows us to create a scss file so app.scss it's a sas file so let's go over here and in the root, and maybe we'll do dot slash. And now we can bring in the theme with these import commands. So I'll bring these in to my SCSS file. And my theme, as I chose here, is quartz, all lowercase letters, quartz, quartz. Step I'm forgetting. Uh, good sign, I'm getting some background colors. <clears throat> Not a good sign that it's spinning. There we go. Took a second. Um, you know, it's a starting point. And it's a working starting point. Now I don't love this theme, so I'm going to immediately change it into something maybe just pulse. And 
And I'm not convinced that it's not working. Save. Maybe I didn't save. There we go. Let's pick another one since Pulse is not playing nice. Sketchy. And maybe what I'm dealing with is uh, caching, so sometimes you have to refresh a few times. Okay. Okay, I'm going to live with this for now. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of cool, I actually don't mind that. And everything is good. Now it was pointed out to me um, that when I log out and refresh, you can see that local storage is still persisting even though we logged out. <clears throat> and I can demonstrate that if I inspect. And so this is a bug that if you followed along last week, you probably still have this bug. Um, that if I go to my application, local storage, I can still see auth token is, you know, still there even though I log out. And so on login, we do one thing. If I go to app.js, <clears throat> now we clear auth, we set auth to null, um, but we need to remove an item called auth token on log out. And so the next thing that I want to bring in is a uh, basically removal of this auth token when we click on log out. So uh, go ahead and pull up the local storage on MDN. And you can see here an example on how to set an item, how to get an item. Those are what we've already coded. Uh, but here's remove item, local storage dot remove item, uh, and then the name of the key. So we will simply code that local storage dot remove item capital I. And then the key as you can see here is called auth token. So when we click log out, we should also take that out of local storage. That should fix that bug. So let's go ahead and uh, click on log out. And you can see now the user's logged out. Now it's actually taken out of local storage, which is what I would expect. And if I refresh, the user isn't, you know, displaying their email address out here because it has more correctly logged out. Okie dokie. Here's our user list. Um, in that video, I go ahead and I show how to use Google Fonts. You could choose to do that. You can mess with the color palette. You could choose to do that. These are um, these are all options. I believe we already have React icons installed. If I'm not mistaken, let me pull up local host. And if I log out, yeah, all of these icons down here were React icons. And so if I go to the footer component, uh, here's React icons. And I brought in all these different icons. So we got React icons. 
So we're good on that. And so that's the theming portion. Again, I uh, just want to encourage you guys to, you know, spend some time on the look and feel here. I just, um, you know, this is just a new skill uh, in the sense of we're bringing in SCSS um, and uh, basically Bootswatch to give you just a template uh, look and feel, or a, a theme as they call it, not a template. Okay, now getting into this lab. Um, a lot of what this particular lab is, is providing the front end for not only listing your bugs, but providing some ability to um, filter, right? So we can sort by. Um, and luckily, we already have a back end that supports that um, and provide keywords. And so we only want to see bugs with certain keywords classification, min and max age, so on and so forth. And so we'll do that, but before we do that, the search interface for bugs, of course, there's a search interface for users. Um, and there's, there's some odds and ends. One of those odds and ends you can see here is implementing a new component called report bug uh, to report new bugs and make this available via bug report. And so we've got React Router, and I'm going to close that down. And so if I go to slash bug slash report per this lab, slash bug slash report, um, we can report a new bug. So maybe we'll start by creating the component. And this will be called report bug.jsx. And I'm going to go to my Mongo database and just look at all the fields that are out there for our bugs because we're going to need a front end control for all of those fields. Let's see. Um, so bugs can have test cases. which presumably would be its own uh, component to add a test case. See, not all of our bugs have test cases. But at a basic, we have a bug ID, a bug title, a description, steps to reproduce, created on, that's created for us, a bug author, also created for us, classification, unclassified, unclassified, and classification duplicate, and assign to. So if I open up Postmail, again, let's just kind of look at the fields that we're sending to our back end. When I'm looking at create a new bug, title, description, and steps to reproduce, looks like at a minimum. Title, description, and steps to reproduce. And then, again, test cases, um, the ability to assign a bug by default. Um, let's look at our back end and see how the assign to is wired up. So if I go to bug, and let's look at the 
new bug is a post title description reproduce we have an assign to object where we have a user ID right so we're getting the whoever's logged in right creating the bug we're getting their ID okay so at minimum those are our three fields so let's kind of go back to our front end title description steps to reproduce uh, seems like we're always passing down auth I'm sure we'll be passing down more things um, but if we're going to report a bug presumably on our back end we are logged in so we're going to need to receive auth to make sure that the user is logged in and let's just have an h1 says report new bug and this is going to return this JSX and inside of here route path equals slash bug slash report I believe slash bug slash report element equals uh, report bug auth equals auth forward slash angle bracket forward slash angle bracket so if you navigate to slash bug slash report, it should pull up that element, send it to, sending it the auth credentials, receive auth, <clears throat> um, we could just do, let's do a console.table auth so that when we go there we see what's going on in the console all right so let's log in and we'll go back to my console and if I just slash bug uh, I gotta take out these console tables. I had that earlier. Slash bug slash report. Okay, report new bug. And there's my table of who's logged in of my auth token. There's a payload. There's an email and a user ID inside of that auth. So that auth is being sent over appropriately. Let me take out a few of these things. So that console table generated this table right here, but you can see there's some other consoles that I need to remove. I was just doing some troubleshooting earlier in the morning. So inside of app.js, delete that, delete that. You probably don't have those lines of console logs. Like I said, uh, and then in the okay let me log back out let me clear my console log in okay so this is on my bug list I'm getting my bugs spitting out in tables so 
bug list. Let me go down to bug item, because I bet you it's in bug item. There it is, council table bug. Take that out. Bug out. Log in. Slash bug slash report. It brings me here. Of course, we can get rid of the console log there. Okie dokie. Um, we're going to need to bring in Axios and the like. So let's What I've been doing is working a little bit with Grant, and Grant has a component to report a bug. I don't think I do. Cool. That probably wasn't part of the last wasn't part of the last assignment. Um, Div So this is the title. going across the whole screen or not and I always get my label controls wrong it's, uh, form forms overview form hyphen label I thought I got that right form hyphen label form hyphen label. Okay. Nope, oh, that's my back end. Okay, one, two, three. We've got title, description, steps to reproduce. Maybe a text area. Text area, text area, rows equals three. So we'll go over here, set rows equals three on our text area. 
title, description, steps to reproduce, and we'll just say margin at the bottom of each div spread those out a little bit This is the value of, we'll just do a button type of submit, and then when you do a button, then you can have a closing button, and then you say, great new bug. <clears throat> now if you clear that, refresh. Great new bug. And back on our nav bar, if you're authenticated, here's our bug list. And really, You know, you could do some different things here. Bug slash report, right? Slash bug slash report. Report new bug. Only if you're authenticated do you see this to report a new bug. There you go. So here's bug list. Here's report new bug. <clears throat> and let's wire up an event listener. Const on create new bug and then down here on click Great new bug. Um, PVT. Create new bug. PVT. Okay. We're almost ready to bring in Axios to report a new bug. Gets easier now that we've done this a time or two. Import Axios. Let's go to our register form. Like we did before, uh, we can read uh, the fields, do some client-side validation. <coughs> and call Axios if all the data is good. Um, so let's bring in some hooks. 
um, on here. Import use state from React. Okay, so now for my value, we'll set the title on change you can set title passing evt target.value so you don't have to make its own function you can just literally say hey set the title to evt that's all you need to do that should allow us to change the title and as I like to do is just test test it by putting it in a you can see it's working uh, so I'll get rid of that Okay, we got our three hooks ready to go. We'll see value equals description on change. EVT target value. I'll have to set the description. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, create a new bug. Um, like over here, let's just make, let's just do required fields. And so we're just going to, for, for the sake of this, just make them all required. Um, so we can kind of start with that. And this is going to go right underneath our hooks. This is going to be title error. This is title, cannot be left blank. If not title, otherwise no error. So here is a variable called title error. If there's not a title, then we say title cannot be left blank. Otherwise the error is left blank. So 
you get this error or you get that error based on this ternary condition, ternary operator. Um, and then down here you say if title error is truthy, then we call set error. So back in app.js, we have this show error function. I'm going to pass that down to my bug report. Show error equals show error. So inside bug report, I need to receive show error. And if title error show error with the error message and return, which kind of stops the rest of the function from executing. So if I leave title blank, kind of go here, 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 create new bug, it says title cannot be left blank. Again, I keep, I keep using this example where I'm using um, toasts, toasts to display my error message. That's not normal practice. Normal practice is you put a piece of text uh, in state, right? Uh, an error message in state, and you display that error message on the screen. It doesn't disappear. Um, but this is the first draft, if you will. And I would leave that as just something for you guys to improve. Um, do the same thing for two more, right? There's description, error. Description cannot be left blank. not description, not steps to reproduce. If description error, show error, description error. Return if steps error then we said if they're truthy then we try and catch our Axios. If title I believe they were ands. Yeah, if title and description. I think there's some redundancy here. Redundancy here. Steps to reproduce are truthy. Axios dot posts. API bugs, let's find the route. API bugs slash new. Is our first argument. The second argument is the data. So we are expecting Title description steps to reproduce. Title description.
steps to reproduce. These are our, so again, it's title, colon, title, description, but again, shorthand, you don't need to do that anymore. So you just say title, description, steps to reproduce. We're gonna put that in a try. I catch and in the event so here we had to log the user back in we don't have to do anything with that we don't have to do anything with auth in this case we're just going to show success and say bug reported presumably Let's go back to our back end and see what, what's being sent to the front end. So let's go here. Here's our new bug and success, bug added, bug ID. Um, so maybe we use, well, there's a success message. So maybe we just put the dot success message in there. Um, so under report bug, we need a pass down show success. Show success, show success. Bring in show success. Show success, res data, is it message? Dot success. And then we need to navigate probably back to the bug list. So let's bring in import, use navigate from Rotterdam, const navig, navigate equals use navigate, and here, show success, navigate, whoop, navigate to slash bugs slash list. So if we add a new bug, we give a success message and we navigate back to the bugs list. Otherwise there should be an error message. Let's see what broke. Title. What's a bug that we've had? Um, Local storage persisting on logout. Description, when a user logs out, the local storage data is not being deleted. Login. Log out. Refresh the login page and you'll see the user email in the nav bar. So we fixed this obviously just a minute ago. Let's inspect, go to council, create a new bug, and let's see, uncaught, oh, this is an await. We need to await, await. And therefore, since this is awaiting, this needs to be a sync. Now let's 
see if that actually got created. Okay, no, it did not get my, this bug did not get created, which is good. Let's clear that out. Try again. Ah, of course, in order to um, report a new bug, we need to pass over um, our auth. So like we did, not when we were registering, but like here, when we did a Um, we need to pass over headers. So we'll send over a method, which I don't, um, let me go back to report a bug. We did axios.post, so that's our method editor was it user editor yeah user editor there was a different syntax here there it is here's a wait axios dot put so our second argument is our data our third argument is our headers which gives our auth token so we need to provide this on report bug as a third argument. So argument one, comma, argument two, comma, argument three. And again, you have to pipe down auth for that to work. Otherwise, you're gonna get an error like that that says error code 401. And so let's clear that out. Good, new bug added. Doesn't like my slash bugs slash list because it's slash bug slash list. So let's make that singular. And back to my bug list, there's local storage persisting on logout, unclassified. And we can not only generate new bugs, but we can change their classification. If I go here into my database, there it is, there it is. There's my bug author, there's my classified, assigned to, it's automatically assigned to me. I am the bug author. And that's about as fast as you could do that. Grant, there's no way you, you stayed with me. What can I help with? Uh, yeah, I've got an Axios error that's cool. popped up. All right, I'm gonna pause and we'll take a look. Okay, and I think that's a good, you know, that's a good quick one for today. You know, we worked on theming, we, we implemented something new on our front end. Um, and so I'll stop the video for today. The one thing I will mention um, is that I've started to refactor some of my postman requests to use my live um, my my live backend and so you know one thing you could do is if you have these collections you could have a collection for your issue tracker that is on localhost you could add another collection for your issue tracker that is on on G Cloud if you're if you're doing that. Um, so it's just something as I move forward, I'm going to be refactoring. So like here's my login user, and I can you know I can as I need to test, I can test things by like for example here, uh, and this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Um, you know when we get into the search interface, I can sort my users by their family name or their last name. And so you can kind of see here, it goes from uh, C to G, to G U, right, to P, R. And so um, I wanted to make sure that my backend, you know, was still supporting it like it did on localhost using these parameter 
uh, variables. And so, you know, um, just something to note going forward, you might, if you're using the, the live version, you might want to, you know, update some of your routes to use that live version. But that's what we can look forward to tomorrow is continuing on with this lab um, and implementing a search interface for bugs. Thankfully, a lot of this is going to be done, you know, a lot of the hard work um, will be done on the back end for us. So we've kind of set us up, ourselves up nicely for this one. Um, Otherwise, Grant, you good? Yeah, mine's good. All right, great. All right, I'll stop it here.